Yo, beast mode, I go beast mode Left, right, hook, then I reload Speed until the E breathe slow Connect to up a cut, clean blow This is Chris Bottoms here for Southpaw Jab with Charlie Edwards ahead of his British title fight yeah. um, How's camp going? 15 There you go, 15, 15. <laughs> Camp, as, as camp. Yeah, camp's going great, really good. Um, yeah, behind the scenes, we're, we're doing some great work. Um, now I've teamed up with Adam Booth, where I'm, I'm loving it. I felt like a new lease of, of life completely. Really, what he's teaching me is great. And I'm really, really looking forward to putting it in into practice in, in the fight and um, showing everyone what how, how much better I have got. Because it is, it's, da it's daunting for me, do you know what I mean? I, I know how much I've improved. So many people have see, been seeing in the um, gym how much I've improved, so it's good. I've got the great sparring up there with Ryan Burnett and um, Lucian Reed. Reed they're, they're one, uh, Brian's a bantamweight, Lucian's a super bantam, so they're bigger guys and they're really pushing me in sparring. So I'm learning a lot and I just can't wait to, to go out there and do the business. Yeah, so it's your first fight with Adam. Mm -hmm. First fight at a new weight for the British title. Um, was the move up a choice because the um, option was there to fight for the British, or was it because you couldn't make fly anymore? Um, when I make fly, it is it's not not healthy the way I was doing it. And when I went with Adam, I had to reassess my style, reassess the things I had to work on, what I had to get better. And the big big part of it was my legs just simply weren't weren't there, they weren't strong enough. So we have really developed my legs. By developing my legs, I needed to move up weight. I told Adam how I used to make the weight, and that, and he just said, "Listen, don't you think about making flyweight again because you're not. You do, do super fly, you'll be a better super fly, and you'll probably even be a better bantam weight." He goes, "But we'll take the super fly route first, and then go from there." But um, yeah, I've really started developing a bit more power in my legs, and my balance is a lot better. So everything's going good. No, it's good to hear. So um. We're down at Crystal Palace. You're here supporting your uh, local Danny yeah, your fellow uh, boxer and Danny Connor. How, how did you rate his performance tonight? Yeah, he boxed really well, to be honest. He fought a, a bit heavier than he normally does. He's normally a lightweight. He boxed in, I think, think of his middle. Just light, light middle, middle, light middleweight. Light yeah. middle, but he put in a good performance actually. He boxed well, and he was slipping and sliding, making a miss, and he was catching him with some great shots. So, Hold on, let me call you back so you it's. Good performance. I really thought it was good. It was good to see him back in the ring. And hopefully, he will keep moving on now, and, and he'll be able to push on to bigger fights. Okay. So he um, deserves, listen, he deserves. He deserves good fights. You know what I mean, when he, whenever he's chucked in a good fight, it always is on the TV. It always puts in a great performance, and he just don't get the shots because he hasn't got the winning record. He ain't got a big promoter behind him. It's hard for him to get good fights, and people look at him and they think he's awkward, he's horrible, I don't really want to risk getting in with him so they go the other route and that's just the way it boxes is but fingers crossed someone will come, come and give him a chance. Yeah, so going back to your career, um, after you announced you stepped up to Superfly and that you were fighting for the Superfly weight British title, um, Selby and his team put out that um, that tweet about you not signing the contract for the fight with him at flyweight. That fight, is it still something in the pipeline for the future? Because Andrew will no doubt step up himself. A hundred percent. It's a fight out there. It's a fight out there that I do want. And it's a fight that the public want. And it's a fight that is going to happen. It's inevitable. Like, everyone wants to see it. And it's going to happen somewhere down the line. And Selby's a great fighter. I'm also a great fighter and it's one of them fights that the British fans are really going to get behind. So um, yeah, it will happen. It will happen when the time's right and when my team advised me to take the fight. I, I, would, I would fight anyone. Look, I've jumped in with John Bill Casemiro after that eight fights and my ninth fight. Do you know what I mean? Against a world champion, two weight and you could tell he was a banger. So, um, so it will happen and I really want it because it's going to be an interesting fight to stick my hands into and really get my teeth into. But when my team tell me to, my team's... They, they run my career, I mean, I can only do what they tell me, and that's what I pay them for. They're my advisors, MTK Global, um, Adam Booth, my coach, Eddie Hearn, my promoter, it's up to them. Okay, so you're two weeks out from, I wouldn't normally say the biggest fight of your career, but having already fought for a world title, it's maybe um, for a British fighter, the most prestigious fight that the belt that you could fight for, mate. And um, how, how is this, how has this camp been different to the, to the world title 
fight camp like? Is it? Listen, it's, it's just it's just been different. I've got a different team around me now, and that's that's all that's changed. Um, my, I, I always give it my 110 percent. I'm just doing doing different things now. And um, my camp was always good before. I never knocked my camp. My camp was always good. When I was working with Danny Vaughan, he's a great coach and he brought me a long way. But now I'm just, it's a different camp and different setup and things have changed. So it's just one of them ones. But like I said, I couldn't thank Danny Vaughan enough for taking me where I am today because he did put a lot of different things. But sometimes you need a change. Everyone needs a change sometimes and it's just the way it is. I wanted to move back, be at home, to be closer to my friends and family and um, to build a proper fan base. And over there I couldn't really build the fan base. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, can't think of anything else to say, so good luck on Cheers. the 15th. Thank you. Um, actually, before I finish, is there anyone you want to thank? I just want to thank everyone. Everyone who is coming up to Scotland. I think I've done like 45 tickets or something like that, ringside tickets as well. So I want to thank everyone um, who's coming up there to support me, everyone who always shows interest in me and um, really gets behind me. I've got a big, big support back home. I, I'm fortunate I don't get a lot of time to fight in London and when I'm in London it's on big cards and we only get a limited amount of tickets so hopefully get this British title back, come back and put on a good good um good support good um fight, get a good fight back back in London. Maybe on a maybe on a smaller show where I get a, a lot of the tickets and then we can um, go from there. Maybe headline the next gen show exactly, or something like that. Exactly, maybe headline one of them next gen shows. It'd be a, great to get a big amount of tickets and take my whole support with me because without them and without supporting boxing when I want. All right, brilliant. Well, good luck for the rest of the camp and good luck on the night. Thanks for talking to us.